Okay, today we're going to talk about the last part of the uh, rotating speaker Leslie build for adapting your small practice amp into a rotating speaker. Uh, last time we talked about the circuit, how to use the TMC2208 driver and a 555 chip in a special circuit arrangement to be able to ramp up and ramp down the stepper motor and silently run it. And today what we're going to talk about is if you wanted to add a remote switch. In this case I built a remote foot switch. And depending on how many functions you want is how complicated it can be. Or I should reverse that and say how easy you want to do it. And I think before we get into talking about the wiring or the circuits or anything, we just need to talk about switches. Just in case some of you that are watching this don't know anything at all about switches so let's just move up here for a moment and I'll zoom in a little bit what I'm holding there in my hand is one of these foot switches you're seeing the back side of it this is the part you would normally push and this line here indicates that there are two switches in this package see so if we just looked at one of them this center contact, when it's in one position, would be connected internally to this leg. When you push the button, then that center contact disconnects from that and connects to this. So this is your center, and this would be called a single pull double throw switch. It's a single pull, because this is your pull, but it can double, it can go in two directions. It can either connect here or connect here. So double throw. Now, because there's two of these switches in one packages, this is a double pull, double throw. And both switches will track the same. They're not connected internally to each other at all from one side to the other. They're separate switches. But when this one, let's say, is connected up here, this one would be connected up here. And when you step on the switch, then these two would be connected and these two would be connected. Okay? So that's a double pull, double throw switch. And that's what I'm going to be using in this circuit. Now, uh, if you want to stay super basic and super simple, I'm gonna I'm gonna rearrange the camera here. Hold on. We're gonna look down at our little circuit board. I can't move it too much because the power cord's not very long. If you want to stay super simple and basic, all you need is a single double throw switch and what you're gonna do is on the two outside legs that we talked about you put ground on one five volts on the other and the center one which switches between the two you just bring right back to the control for the 555 and that would give you your coral and tremolo positions or if you will slow and fast and basically with the uh, old original Hammond or organs the M2, B3, all those that would have the large Leslie cabinet. They had a flip switch on them and that's all it did. It was either in coral slow mode or it was flipped over in tremolo. I don't remember seeing one that had an actual stop position. It may have been an option. Maybe the units I saw just didn't have it. Don't know. But um, if you did that route and used a flip switch you wouldn't need any sort of indicators. You don't need any other wiring. You would just connect it like I just said there. The three wires you'd connect it up. You're good. You're done. But as soon as you want to start adding indicators, or as soon as you want to add even the kill switch to completely stop the unit, which is what we basically have going on here. See, I have my standby mode. Nothing is running at all. But if I turn the standby off, and you notice that these two LEDs aren't lit, now we have a, a LED over here that says slow. So the motor is in the slow mode. And if I push the fast, then the motor starts ramping up into fast mode and it indicates fast. So what happens if you hit standby when you're in fast mode? Well if you hit standby when you're in fast mode it's going to stop. But now what happens when you turn the standby off? It was in fast mode last. That 5.5 five timer is still running at a high rate of speed. All we've done is told the driver chip to go into standby. So what would happen if we just wired it and came out of this, well the system would crash because stepper motors do have a, an upper 
speed that they can run at, and they can't jump from their lowest to their highest when they're under load, they'll go into cogging mode, which means you just sit there and they buzz. You need to ramp up to it. It doesn't have to be a slow ramp like I'm doing on the Leslie. It can be a fast ramp, but you still have to ramp up to it. So inside this foot switch, in order to do this, and this is the most complicated version that you could wire, it doesn't cost anymore, it's just more wiring. When I'm in standby, besides turning off the lights over here so I can see that I'm only in standby, I also have it basically force the 555 into slow mode. So when I come out of standby, it's then going to ramp up since fast was selected. So all those different things make it more complicated. Whereas if you just wanted to go from low to high, that's just a simple little switch and three wires and nothing more. And just an example of um, other switches. Let's see. Let me remove you up here again. I think we can do a lot of this up here. Just Google uh, double pull, double throw switches and you see here's basically the foot switch that I'm using in this project, but there are also slide switches. There are toggle switches. There's all kinds of them. This is a single pull double throw because here's your center and here's your two outsides. This particular one has a center off position, which wouldn't do you any good in this particular application. But uh, real easy if all you want is, is fast and slow. Okay, so let's assume that you just don't want fast and slow, that you want to be more, more into this. Let's start. We know what the box looks like. This is the 3D printed box. I've mounted my two switches into it. This is the back side. You can see the one, two, three. So that's one switch. One, two, three. That's the other. This line also helps you think of it as two switches in both places. Nothing mounted uh, inside the case yet. So the next step I did is I put my three LEDs in there. In this case these are three millimeter. It's a small LED and LEDs do have a polarity. They have a positive and negative anode and cathode. I put the anodes, the positives, all to the top and the cathodes, that's the negative, all facing down. And this is what it would look like from the front. And I think at this point we need to jump down to here. So if you want to wire yours up the way that I'm running mine, I figured we'd just kind of go through it frame by frame. I'm going to take the two positive leads. Remember this is flipped over. So this is actually the slow and fast if you flip the box over and we're reading the writing. Solder the two positive leads together put a 330 ohm resistor on that and bring it down to the bottom side of the switch over here on the right. This is the standby LED. Take the positive lead, the anode, run it through a 330 ohm resistor and bring it up to this top connection of the switch right here. And the negative side of that LED, there's a wire we're going to run all the way over to this side of the switch right here. And then, because these two indicate fast and slow, they're going to go to different areas. In other words, this one, which is slow, we're going to bring right up and solder to this leg right here. This is which is fast, we're going to bring it and solder it right to there. I could explain to you what's going on here, but to a lot of you it would just be goggly goop, probably. But um, So here's our next picture. I'm going to make a few more connections, take a... The, the color of the wire doesn't matter, I just actually was using what was laying in front of me and figured it might make it easier to explain what's going on. So this red wire, go from this outside one here, bring it over to this middle, and also jump a middle one up to here, right there. Now there's another brown one. We're going to go from this center contact on this side over to where we had that yellow one earlier, over here. Then I left this one looped out so it would be easier to see. So the center of this switch all the way over and solders right onto this bottom one right here. Now I've brought in my cable and we should probably talk about the cable. You know the cable that's going to come off. Where are you going to get this cable to come that? Well, if you or anybody you know has got an old mouse 
just cut the cable off the old mouse because the uh, old mice, let's get, it moved us back one, have four conductors in them. You can usually find one in the garbage. You could find one at Goodwill and heck, worst case, go to Walmart and pay four bucks for one and cut the mouse off and throw it away. It gives you your, your cable. And in the cable, there'll be different colored wires. So just write down what colors you're gonna use for what I normally would keep the red wire in my mind as being positive. So in this case, I brought the red wire up and soldered it right on to this part right here. And and the yellow wire I'm going to use is my speed control for the 555. And so I brought it up and, yes, it's going under there and it's soldering right to here. Then there's a, uh, a black wire in that bundle, which we bring over and solder to the center right here. And all that leaves is the brown. And the brown I used as the uh, standby. And that's pretty much it. Um, for those that want to flash back to the last video, then here was a schematic showing that. And, and again, one of the unusual things about in this particular 555 setup is pin 7 is not used in this one. It's a 6 to 2, and they're taking the feedback, the control for the capacitor, is actually coming from pin 3, the output of the chip. Normally, when you're wiring a 555 to be an oscillator, you uh, have a resistor between 6 and 7 and a resistor between 7 and 8. And it doesn't give you a, a pure square wave out because 7 is basically an emitter-based uh, switch, which only pulls down to ground for shorting a cap out. And Well, I'm getting off track. We are talking about the foot switch today, and we're not talking about the 555 timer. So that's basically the entire wiring for doing the foot switch. It, like I say, it gets real complicated looking when you want to add LEDs showing what's going on and have LEDs turn off and want to have that automatic ramp control in case you uh, went into standby when you were in high speed. All these things can make it more complicated. But if all you wanted to do was just switch between fast and slow, coral and tremolo, all you would need is one switch and you would only use one half of it, and you would simply have ground on one leg, 5 volt on the other, and the center one, you would take back to the control to the 555. So three wires, you wouldn't have to do anything else. And you could just switch between fast and slow. As soon as you want to add other things like standby, LED indicators, a uh, forced ramp control in the standby mode, then the wiring gets a little more complicated looking, but it's actually very simple. So that's it, we've wrapped it up. For all two of you that have been interested in uh, building a Leslie unit to use with your practice amps or even interested in controlling a stepper motor with silently controlling a stepper motor without doing any programming, uh, I think that's about all we have to say. We're finally done with the project.